we are ready to begin the North Carolina APCO meeting. So with that, I will call to order the July 17th chapter meeting of North Carolina APCO. I will now ask our second vice president, Tracy Trogdon, to conduct a roll call of our board members present. Call uh, Ms. Daryl Anderson. Present. Uh, Byron Burns. Present. Chad Deese. Present. David Dodd. Pretty sure I saw David. David was here. Uh, Greg Dotson. Present. Samantha Dutch. I think Samantha Dutch is on. Maybe still muted there. Tracy, I'm sorry, I'm here. I knew I saw David. your face in there. Yeah. Travis Essex. Travis Essex. Travis here. Uh, Missy Ezell, I don't believe is on with us today. Ray Gilliland. Present. Grayson is here. Uh, Janet King, are you on the line? Present. Lori Laughlin. Lori Laughlin. Andrew McKenzie. Christine Moore, she is out. Melanie Neal, there's Melanie, I saw Melanie. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Randy Surratt. Randy's camera's there, but I think he, he ran away. I don't know where he's at. Sarah Templeton. I'm here. I am here, of course. Thank you, Dr. Tier, Herman Weiss. Good morning, everybody. And Elton Wright. Is Elton online? Elton's uh, got a conflict with it, with uh, a monthly standing meeting. Okay, thanks, Byron. All right. All right, I believe that should be everybody. Thank you, Tracy. I want to start out with a few special recognitions as we begin our meeting. First, I want to again thank our corporate sponsors, AT&T, Carolina Recording Systems, Horizon Consoles, and Motorola Solutions. And typically this is where we would ask people to stand up to be recognized, but we'll just recognize you while you stay seated today. Uh, first, I want to recognize all past North Carolina APCO chapter presidents, recognize all registered public safety leaders, RPLs, and recognize certified public safety executives, CPEs. And if you will bear with me for just one moment, we have another really special recognition. Today we recognize and honor four outstanding members of North Carolina APCO, ones who have dedicated their life to the industry and have contributed to making APCO the organization that it is today. Please hear the words of a letter dated July 9th, 2020 from APCO International President Tracy Hilburn. 
Congratulations, your ABCO membership designation has been elevated to that of a senior member. The ABCO Executive Committee unanimously approved your nomination for the designation of senior member. As was evident in the nomination from your chapter's executive board, you met and exceed the qualifications necessary for this honor. Designating you as a senior member of APCO International is a testament to your contributions and service to the public safety communications community and to this association. It is members such as you who unselfishly give of themselves that make it possible for all members to reap the benefits of belonging to APCO. APCO International holds you in high honor. On behalf of the Executive Committee and all members of APCO International, thank you for all that you have done. We are pleased and proud to honor you as a senior member of APCO International. Sincerely, Tracy Hilburn, President, APCO International. Today it is my honor to recognize Gerald Anderson, David Dodd, Wesley Reed, and Marsha Withrow as the next senior members of APCO International from North Carolina. We appreciate your dedication to the industry and congratulate you all So again, join me again in congratulating Gerald Anderson, David Dodd, Wesley Reed, and Marsha Withrow, all of becoming senior members of ABCO International. Uh, once we're able to meet again in person, I will present you all with your certificates and lapel pins regarding your senior member status. So again, congratulations to all of you. Thanks, Grayson. Thanks, Grayson. Congratulations. And next on our agenda item is to approve me meeting minutes. Um, the minutes of the May 8th, 2020 chapter meeting were posted on the chapter website. I'll now entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes and approve the meeting minutes. I'll make the motion. Okay, I have a motion from Gerald Anderson. Is there a second? Second from Herman. Okay, second from Herman Weiss. All in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right, thank you. For this next portion, Samantha Dutch, were you able to join us? Yes, I'm here. Okay. All right. Well, earlier this year, with the appointment of Ray Gilliland to serve as our interim immediate past president, that opened up the regional ambassador position for Region E. So I'm happy to share with you that we have appointed Samantha Dutch from Scotland County 911 to fulfill the remainder of this term. And I will now ask our executive counsel, David Dodd, to provide the oath of office to Samantha. Okay. Samantha, I can't see you, so I'm going to assume that you're going to raise your right hand uh, for this swearing in. Uh, you have been duly appointed by the Executive Board of the North Carolina's APCO to the Office of Regional Ambassador. By this appointment, I'm sorry, by this appointment, the Board would invest in you the power of the North Carolina chapter of APCO. It bestows upon you its confidence, trust, and places in your hands the duties of your office as established. Do you, under God, under country, and before these witnesses here assembled, accept this power, this responsibility, this confidence, this trust, this establishment of duties, and solemnly swear to uphold, protect, and execute to the best of your abilities the aims and objections, the objectives of the Association of Public Safety Communication Officers International? I do. So be it. I now pronounce you duly established as a regional ambassador for the North Carolina chapter of APCO. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, David, and congratulations, Samantha. We look forward to working with you in the upcoming year. Thank you. All right, we'll now move on to reports from separate or special committees. Um, first is the treasurer's report and audit committee update. Lori, were you able to make it back on the line? 
Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, give me just one second. Okay, in our main checking account, we have $322.28. The symposium account has $2,511.47. Scholarship account has $1,432. Our money market account has $56,194.77 for a total of $60,460.52. Uh, for the audit committee, we are working on trying to get things scanned in because we're going to have to do it virtual with uh, all the COVID stuff that we've got going on. We're looking to have everything scanned in hopefully by the third week of August and the audit will be completed by the September meeting. Also, our 2019 taxes, we did file an extension, and they should be filed also by the September meeting. All right, thank you, Lori. All right, the next report will be the Executive Council report from David Dodd. Hey, Grayson, just very little here. Uh, as everybody knows, the, uh, the APCO International Conference in Orlando was canceled. Uh, there are still just a few meetings that must be conducted each year in association with the conference. Uh, those meetings are going to be Thursday and Friday, July 30th and 31st. The, on Thursday, the executive committee and the board of directors will be meeting just about all day, I think, uh, with workshops and, and meetings. And part of their schedule will also include the first general business session, which will be done virtually starting at 1.30 p.m. And I didn't mention that the uh, executive committee and the board of directors, they will be live at headquarters in Daytona Beach for their Thursday meeting. Then on Friday, the 31st, the executive council meeting will convene at 11 a.m. on Friday and run till about 345. At the end of the executive council meeting, the second general business session will occur starting at four o'clock and it will be virtual as well. So. Those are the meetings coming up. The only other thing I will mention is uh, voting is open right now for first and second vice president at the international level. And I'll just stop at that because uh, we'll be hearing from Angie Bowen, one of our candidates for second vice president, I believe a little later in the meeting. And I'm sure she'll be more than happy to tell you how you can vote. So that's all I've got. All right, thank you, David. Next on our agenda is the training report, Gerald Anderson. Good morning, everybody. The APCO communications training for um, CTO and for that was going to be held at APEX, as well as the supervisor class going to be held at Davie County, of course, both classes until communication centers and other buildings are open for live training. Those classes are going to be postponed and probably until sometime next year. So once we are able to go back to either those original host sites or find new ones for those classes, uh, if you have staff on the roster, they'll stay there. And as soon as we get dates and locations, we will send out an announcement. We are pleased to announce the 2021 Telecommunicator Training Symposium scheduled for October the 4th through the 6th, 2021, with fingers crossed. Um, our host site would still be the Embassy Suites in Greensboro, North Carolina. And we're going to stick with our slogan since we got canceled this year of Soar to New Heights, Engage, Energize, and Empower. As our world continues to keep changing due to the COVID pandemic, we're going to have to change our approach to training. And you can see this and how you've been training your staff probably at your agency. To keep our commitment to our members, we will begin offering a series of trainings online in the Moodle format. Um, at our last meeting, I announced that our first class, and it will still be our first class, will be effectively handling stress in a COVID work environment. So be on the lookout for registration for the, that class, as well as others that will be created for this series of training uh, in the Moodle format, free to all members. In addition to this, we didn't want to not have our telecommunicator insanity retreat. 
which uh, is always graciously hosted at Melanie Neal's shop. So we're gonna put that in a virtual format. And once we get that built and ready to go, I'll send out more information as well as registration. We wanna to try to keep uh, bringing you the great training uh, that we've been giving as a chapter and take your ideas and suggestions. As we continue to work on developing future training, we ask for your patience as of course, all of this extra work occurs around our sometimes new and morphing duties at our, at our jobs. If you wish to host a class in 2021, again, with fingers crossed, or would like to see a certain topic offered in a classroom format or online platform, please contact me directly via email. The North Carolina chapter of APCO is committed to offering training to our members and friends, and we will closely follow the executive order issued by our governor and any additional agency safety protocols as we continue to do that for you. Today's friendly reminder. Today is July 17, 2020, everybody. That means you have five months and 14 days to finish your 2020 telecommunicator in-service training. Remember, this training is required for all telecommunicators that work under the direction of a sheriff. It is required for all staff hired on or before June 30th of a given calendar year. So if you hired any staff between January 1st and June 30th this year, they have to have the in-service training. Everyone that you hired on July 1st and afterward gets waived into the next year. And they're not letting up just because COVID is around. If you do not have these classes in-house, normally I would say, ooh, find another agency, but nope. Today I will say get it online at Richmond Community College, Alamance Community College, and through the North Carolina Justice Academy Moodle platforms. Instructors, remember you must successfully test out of a block of instruction before you teach it. And remember, if you're a school director or a qualified assistant, you must go to the North Carolina Justice Academy training online portal and do your annual instructor update class. This is what keeps you certified. You don't have to worry about the old forms and, and the hours that you taught. This is what's gonna keep you certified as a general instructor. If you fail to do this- Join the meeting. Your GI certification will be revoked hate it for you, and they're gonna say you're gonna to have to go back to school for two fun-filled weeks. So please do the mandatory training. It is live now on the Academy uh, website. It take you maybe 30, 45 minutes at best with no interruptions. As always, it's our chapter's goal to continue to provide quality training to our members across the state at cost-effective costs. We thank you for your support and our efforts by attending the training that we've done in the past. We look forward to you coming to training in the future as we continue to widen our efforts and way that we provide your training. Mr. President, that is all I have unless there are questions on the floor. Thank you, Gerald. Are there any questions at this time? Okay, next we'll move into our conference committee report. Um, Missy Izell, the Secretary of North Carolina APCO has been appointed as the co-chair for the conference committee. Um, she's unable to join us today, but like Randy mentioned in the first meeting, we did have a first meeting yesterday to kind of get the committee going. So really at this point, just want you to mark your calendars for May 2nd through 5th for the 2021 Public Safety Communications Conference will be held in Wilmington, North Carolina. Again, May 2nd through 5th, and there'll be additional information forthcoming in the following months once the committee gets up and going. All right, next on our agenda is the North Carolina 911 board report from Melanie Neal. Good morning, everybody. Um, the July meeting for the North Carolina 911 board, board has been canceled. Um, it was a very small agenda, so the July meeting was canceled. Our next board meeting will be on Friday, August the 28th at 10 a.m. I do wanna note there is a funding committee meeting that is scheduled for July 23rd, which is next Thursday, from one to three. For all of the PSAP managers that are on today, there will be discussion about some things that have previously been considered ineligible that they will be voting on to become eligible. I would highly recommend anybody that is interested to go to the 911 board website for that funding committee. Join by phone if you can't join by Teams so that you can hear that discussion and you will be informed about those items. The uh, 911 board staff could not join the uh, chapter meeting today 
we have been in grant application presentations all morning and uh, they are still in those. I dropped off to join this and then I'll be going back to the grant presentations. They, uh, they actually have got those going on until around three o'clock today. So none of the staff could join today. Pokey said to please give her regrets. That uh, funding committee meeting again is July the 23rd from one to three for those that, that want to join. Um, the primary thing that I want to mention for all of the PSAT managers here that uh, we need to be aware of moving forward into the next fiscal year for funding purposes. The 911 board's 2020 goals as far as funding goes included um, a strategy and policy to address how to manage excessive PSAP fund balances moving forward. I think at the last conversation we had as a board, there's something around 71 or $72 million in fund balances. The General Assembly considers that to be an excessive amount of money to be in fund balances. So PSAP managers also need to be aware that finance departments for city and county governments are looking at fund balances under a different general statute then the 911 board looks at fund balances. So the 911 board uses general statute 143B-1406 item C. Again, the 911 board uses 143B-1406 section C when they are looking at fund balances and what they should be. Finance departments for city and county governments use general statute 159 hold on just a second i printed it out this morning 159-8 subsection a so the difference is um i know of two psaps already in the state that have had issues with the 911 board saying you have plenty of money in your fund balance and the finance department saying you can't use that money. So there's a rub between the two and I will share from my personal experience with this occurring. Um, we went back and forth with my finance department and the 911 board to the point that my finance director drove to Raleigh and met with the 911 board staff and it actually came to the point that we could either sue the 911 board as a city and force it to go to court or we could drop it. Um, so at that point, we decided to drop it because of the amount of money that it was over. But there may be some Join the meeting. decides not to do that. Um, it, it's entirely your call. But until it goes to a court, and a judge actually rules on which statute trumps the other, there's always gonna be a discrepancy between the two. So I would just recommend any PSAP manager that, that gets funding from the 911 board, educate yourself on the two statutes and the differences in what those statutes say for carry forward. So um, that is actually all I have to report right now. The grant committee, as I said, are reviewing applications and, and having presentations now. They will have a discussion after today's presentations. Today finishes up the presentations. Um, those decisions will be made and then brought to the um, full 911 board for recommendations at the August 28th meeting. And with that, Mr. President, if anybody has any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer them. There was one question in the chat just confirming the finance meeting is July 23rd. Yes, that is correct. July 23rd from 1 to 3. Right. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Melanie. All right. We'll move on next to our commercial advisor report and commercial advisor Byron Burns. Thanks, Grayson. Um, yeah, uh, uh, just uh, some news to report, keep it brief. Um, we have been having kind of bi-monthly meetings following the, the same schedule as, as uh, these meetings with the commercial advisory 
uh, council group, uh, some really good and productive discussion. You know, one of the things we've been talking about is uh, obviously the sponsorship, um, which was significant for, for the members, um, has been impacted, at least the opportunities with, with uh, COVID. And so trying to come up with some creative ways to, to help, um, you know, do some, some, some great things for the chapters, but uh, also um, uh, help out the sponsorships. Um, some industry news just to report from the group. Um, AT&T reported that uh, they estimate uh, to cut over 44 new centers to Esinet this year, uh, all with I3, um, with an added offering for admin IP lines. Um, also, I think uh, y'all have heard about it, but uh, SPFI is still working on their new branding, which are called Horizon Consoles, part of the SPI, <laughs> SPFI group. Um, and uh, just to, you know, another note just out there, um, you know, as, as agencies are continuing to uh, uh, go on the ESI net, just make sure um, you're thinking about vendors who might be affected by any changes made at the center, not just uh, isolated to phones. So uh, that's all I have to report. Uh, any other questions or happy to answer anything, but uh, we're, we're excited to continue to try to develop to see what this commercial advisory council is. It's uh, again, it's been a little interesting with, with COVID as, as, as everybody's being impacted, but uh, excited to, um, continue on. All right, very good. Thank you, Byron. Um, the next report we have is the historical committee report. And before I turn it over to Randy Surratt, I just want to take a minute to personally thank him. As you saw earlier, we have the four new senior members of APCO International. Uh, it, it's the hard work of Randy over the years that has got us to this point. There's a significant amount of research and time that goes into submitting an application. So I just want to personally thank Randy for all he's done to, to honor these four individuals today. Thank you, Grayson. Am I muted? Nope, we can hear you. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, I'd like to um, offer my congratulations to the last four and um, still working. You know, I, I still got some uh, work to do and I enjoy doing it. So there's a few other names there that uh, we'll see if it works out. Uh, and um, they'll, <clears throat> the uh, national um, committee will get back to you and I, uh, with the findings. Um, that's about all I have to do. I'm just, and I'm working on some other things on the side, but uh, probably, <clears throat> excuse me, when we get back to uh, normal meetings, I'll, fill you in more on it it's just kind of hit and miss uh the thing about it, i may have mentioned this before when you're when you're when i'm researching our information uh through all the uh, medias that we have uh, um i find other things that say you know, it's like hey I, I need to make a note of that because i'm gonna be working on that so so it forces you or it's not really forcing me but i find other information that i know i'd like to see later so that's kind of where that's at. So I'll, I'll keep y'all filled in on it. The only thing um, I will add to this is that um, <clears throat> the first information I sent in on David Dodd, they rejected. Um, they said that I had tried to submit uh, this type of information for Frank and uh, they rejected it then. And they asked me to please not uh, try that again. And it was stuff that I thought David should he's been around so long. I thought that he should be uh, recognized for it. Just one of the things was like the time that uh, I know that uh, he shouted out through a window to dispatch fire trucks during a thunderstorm, which had disabled the radio system. I thought that went above the call of duty, but uh, they didn't think so, David. So uh, they rejected that. So, but anyway, you're really you had hallucinating other, now, you know that, don't you? You, you had a, a lot of strong qualities and, and uh, uh, there was a lot of good documentation along with the other three members. And um, so I, they, again, I offer my congratulations to all four of you, You're all four good people. Thank you. Thanks buddy. Yeah. Thank you, Randy again. <clears throat> all right. So moving on in our agenda, the next item is just a quick membership update. Um, since we met just two months ago, I'm happy to share that, North Carolina APCO has gained an additional 60 new members. So just as a quick recap, our membership numbers, uh, associate members, we have 77. We have 17 commercial members, 628 full members, 
um, 845 online members and given a total membership number of 1,567 as of yesterday. The next report will come from the Compassionate Care Committee, Janet King. Hey, Grayson, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. First off, I just want to say thank you to everyone for all of your love, support, texts, emails, calls throughout my journey. And it's, it's greatly appreciated without knowing that I have that support. Even if it's at long distance, I still feel it and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Vic, for the prayer this morning. It was great to see you the other day and thank you for the ice cream. It was very pleasurable in such a hot time. I just want to say that I did send out several cards since we last had our virtual meeting. Um, I sent one to Mark Britt, which is the brother of Donna Wright. He's recovering from a serious automobile accident. Also, Pam Collins, she had a recent hospital stay. Tracy Trogdon, she had recent surgery. And our good friend Connie Garten, she's recovering from medical issues and actually still facing uh, a journey. And I know she would greatly appreciate us rallying around her with support and love as well. Um, I don't know if Donna can give an update on her brother or if Vic can give an update on the young female firefighter that was injured. Uh, I don't know when she was injured, but it's been a couple of months since I sent her a card. And during the Nina meeting, I did hear Alan Crest talk about a death of a firefighter. And if someone could get me that information along with the fire department's information, I'd like to send a card. And someone during the Nina's meeting mentioned something about someone's husband passing. If somebody could get me that information as well, I would, I would appreciate that. Um, Mr. President, that's all I've got to report. Okay, thank you, Janet. Vic, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I, Megan, who was the firefighter from Pamlico County that was struck by a vehicle while working a structure fire in our county on a mutual aid call um, a few months ago now. She just came home last week. Uh, uh, she's got a long road ahead of her, but she's home with her family. Uh, there's been firefighters by her side since the accident happened, and they're still taking care of her daily. So uh, just continue to keep Megan in your prayers. She's a young lady with a lot of willpower, and she's gonna she's gonna she's gonna make she's gonna pull through this. We have we have our trust in God on this. All right, thank you, Vic. All right, moving on to our next committee report, the CJIS committee, um, Steve Lingerfeld. I'm not sure if he was able to join us. Steve, are you on the meeting? Okay, the next report will be the interagency communications report. Um, Lewis Cheatham, I don't believe he's made it either, but Lewis, if you're here, Okay, so moving on, I'm excited to share with you all that the ABCO Emerging Technology Forum is coming back to North Carolina. Um, it was hosted in Raleigh several years ago. It's been around the country and coming back to North Carolina this year. We're taking place October 8th and 9th at the uh, Sheraton Hotel in Uptown Charlotte. The good part about it is registration is only $25 per person for both days. Something our chapter is gonna do to help encourage attendance from our chapter is to offer a select number of scholarships for attendees. Um, these will include um, registration, lodging, and meals. We're working on the details of those scholarships, so be watching for that information to be coming out in the next few weeks. And again, those dates are October 8th and 9th at the Sheridan Charlotte Hotel in Uptown Charlotte. And like I said, additional information will be forthcoming about the scholarships. Right. Next on our agenda is we're honored to have North or ABCO International Second Vice President Candidate um, Angie Bowen with us from the Georgia chapter. And Angie, if you're back with us, I'll turn it over to you for a few words. There we go. Can you hear me now? 
Yes. Okay, good yes. deal. Well, um, thank you everybody for giving me a few minutes to uh, spend with you today. It's always interesting to listen to other chapters have their meetings and uh, I have to just tell you, you guys are really doing it right over there. Um, it's, it's very interesting. I've already jotted down some ideas to share with my own chapter here in Georgia. But um, before I kind of go into what I want to talk about, I do want to congratulate uh, and join the rest of you in congratulating your newest senior members, Wesley and Marsha and David and Gerald. Um, it's a, a very good, on a great honor to reach that level. And uh, I know it won't be long before you all are able to ascend to life members. So congratulations on that achievement. Um, as Grayson said, I am a candidate for APCO International Second Vice President. For those of you who don't know me, just a little bit about my experience. I started out as a telecommunicator in an agency just south of Atlanta, Georgia, back in the late 80s. We didn't have 911 or CAD. We thought uh, taping a run card to a broom handle to hand it across the room was high tech back then. Um, worked my way up, spent 16 and a half years there, and when I left, I had a position that was what today would be known as operations manager. So I did training and handled um, just about anything else that didn't reach the director or deputy director level. In 2004, I had the opportunity to take a job with the state running our state mandated training program for communications officers. And I've been here ever since. I've progressed up and I'm now a manager here over our curriculum services section where I continue to manage our communications training program and we're um, starting to really rapidly expand that program to where we can take uh, more advanced training out into the regions around the state. When it comes to APCO, I have served in the Georgia APCO chapter since I believe about 2004. I actually started off as a member of the NENA board and um, we worked together and after I'd spent my time on the NEDA board, I transitioned over to the APCO chapter and have spent several years um, being very active there. We're very fortunate here in Georgia, much like you are there, is that our Georgia NENA and APCO chapters work hand in hand on training. And for about the past 10 or 11 years, we've really done everything together, co-located meetings and conferences and that sort of thing. I served in every position on the APCO board except for president and treasurer. Um, I first, my last, excuse me, my last position on the Georgia APCO board was as our executive council representative. I served on the executive council from 2011 to 2017. And in 2017, I was elected as a Gulf Coast regional representative to the APCO International Board of Directors. During my time with APCO, I've served on and chaired several different committees, including Communication Center Standards Committee, which I'm very proud of the work that we did there. One of our biggest accomplishments was the establishment of the agency training program certification program, um, more affectionately known as P33 certification. I know one of your members, Rick Thomas, was the chair of that uh, committee for several years, and that's a very big accomplishment I'm proud of that we were able to do. I also, in 2015, I was appointed as the group leader chair by President Brent Lee. And the group leaders, for those of you who don't know, work as the liaison between the committees and the executive committee. So that's about my qualifications. If you want to know more about my qualifications, I can point you to my Facebook page. But um, like I told your board yesterday, I think most of us are more interested in the future than the past. And so I just want to take just a couple minutes and, and give you an idea of why I'm running for APCO International. One of the things that I think that we have to look at and, and really embrace is that the fact that the jobs we're doing today are going to look very different in the months and years to come. We've already seen how the pandemic has forced some agencies to get very innovative. For example, in Alexandria, Virginia, you have call takers who are receiving and dispatching calls from their home. Um, so we've got to look at, as we move forward more rapidly toward embracing a true next-gen environment, what is that gonna look like? So we're gonna have to not only 
first recognize our telecommunicators as they deserve to be recognized at the federal level as protective services occupations, but we also have to, to mentor, and this is gonna sound a little bit strange, but we need to mentor our more veteran workers because I have seen in the past some really good dispatchers that the job just outgrew them because there was no one there to help them keep up with new technology. At the same time, we need to do some reverse mentoring as well and bring those veteran workers together with the younger folks because, you know, computers are not always going to be reliable. They're not always going to be there. And I think that besides teaching old dogs new tricks, we need to remember sometimes we need to teach new dogs some old tricks. And so by mentoring and coming together and partnering our more veteran members with our newer members and newer telecommunicators, I think that we can all work together and progress into the future better prepared for not only learning new technology, but also better prepared in what do we do if that technology fails? What do we do if we get a call that really affects us on an emotional or psychological basis. And so there are so many different things that we need to look at. Another thing that we really have to consider is the mental wellness of our telecommunicators and our technologists and our technicians, our managers, our directors at every level. You know, just because you get promoted doesn't mean your stress goes away or that you forget the traumatic calls that you've handled in the past. A lot of times those things just get buried and they come out when you least expect them. Another thing we have to consider is that wellness is not just mental health and giving people the tools to go talk to someone when they're feeling emotionally or psychologically, psychologically challenged, but it's taking a more holistic approach and attending to the entire person by giving them the tools that they need to meet their needs, both um, obviously psychologically and emotionally, but spiritually, physically, and even financially. So I've got some ideas about how we can accomplish that. I think that it's important as well as we're, you know, I'm addressing a joint meeting to talk about relationships. I was asked a question yesterday about what can I do to help improve the relationship between the two national associations? And I will tell you that um, the biggest thing that I think we can do is by fostering more personal relationships between the elected volunteers. The elected volunteers are the folks who should be driving Join the, the meeting of the two associations. And a lot of folks don't realize, but there are basically two parts to both associations. You have the business side and you have the membership side. The business side is ran by our professional staff. The membership side is ran and managed by our volunteer elected officials. And so we just got to, you know, take the professional staff out of the room sometimes as much as I respect them on both sides, but build those personal relationships between the elected volunteers and try to work out any differences in a respectful, good faith manner and agree where we can if we disagree, do it respectfully and come to consensus whenever possible. Compromise is always a good thing. Um, not everybody gets what they want, but everybody gets a little bit of something that they want. So uh, I think that that's something that my, just my natural personality will benefit in that. Finally, I wanna talk about engagement. Um, I was very interested to hear Grayson mentioned you have 628 full members of APCO. Those are 628 folks who are eligible to vote in national elections. As I just said, the elected members are the ones who sort of drive the association. And voting is an opportunity to exercise your voice and have influence over which direction the executive committee takes us. Last year, North Carolina um, cast 49 votes in the election for the executive committee, and that's actually very good. That's in the top 10. You were actually number six just behind Texas and Virginia. So this year, 
as I've done on every other call I've had with other chapters, is I'm challenging you all to double the number of people who cast a vote in the election. You can vote at, <coughs> pardon me, apcovotetoday.org. You can go on there. You can read the biogra uh, biographies of myself and Mark Palins, who's my opponent, and then also Jason Kern. Uh, although Jason is unopposed for the Office of First Vice President, he still needs to earn a uh, majority of yes votes in order to progress to that seat. And then cast your vote for the person that you think is most qualified and most prepared to listen to your needs and to fight for what it is that we need um, across the country. Remember that the executive committee doesn't just represent one chapter or even a region or even APCO International, but in my mind, as the executive committee, we're fighting for public safety across the country, whether you're a member of APCO or not. And so I just ask that you take the time, reach out to members who might not have voted yet. Maybe they don't know anything about me or Mark or who to vote for or why to vote, um, but reach out to them and encourage them to research the candidates. I've got a, a Facebook page, Angela Bowen, 911.com. You can learn a little bit more about me if you'd like. And then again, cast a vote for who you think is best prepared to lead APCO in the future. Why am I running for executive council? And I know it sounds cliche, or not executive council, excuse me, executive committee. Guys, I credit my career success to the relationships that I've formed, to the lessons that I've learned and the experiences I've had that I've been afforded through my involvement with APCO at both the chapter and association level. I understand how important it is to actively participate in the governance of the association and being involved and getting on committees and learning from people who have more experience and different perspectives than I do. And so by running for the executive committee, I hope to sort of expand the, the parachute, if you will, and, and bring more folks in and let them have some of the same experiences and opportunities that I've had. I'll shut up now. I, you know, if you know me at all, you know I can talk a lot, <laughs> but I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have, and I would appreciate your support. Yeah, again, we thank you for joining us today. Are there any questions for Angie? No questions, but thank you, Angela. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, so moving on, we'll now open the meeting up to any board members for questions or comments. And then to any of the membership, if you have questions or comments, you can unmute yourself or use the chat feature. Grace, and I wanted to add something. I, I was unable to join the Nina portion of the meeting due to being on the grant presentations with the 911 board. And I don't know if Stephanie Chapman received this information or not for our our department. We did have a telecommunicator that was diagnosed two weeks ago with breast cancer and is just starting her battle with that. So uh, I and Guilford Metro would appreciate any prayers everybody can send up on her behalf. Thank you. And can you send her information to Janet? I sure will. Thanks. Yep. Thank you, Melanie. All right. Any other comments, questions? Grayson? Yes. Can you give the location of the meeting in September? Okay, so that was my next um, topic. We do have the meeting scheduled for Wednesday, September 16th. We're trying midweek, so Wednesday, September 16th. It'll be at 10 a.m. And we are planning to hold a meeting in Wilmington. That is our goal at this point. Uh, we'll continue monitoring the situation and you know, make decisions closer to time whether we can actually meet in person or need to do it virtually but that September 16th is the next meeting date all right unless there's any other business for the good of the chapter I will take a motion for adjournment I move a second we have a motion and second. With that, we'll adjourn the July 17th meeting of North Carolina APCO. Thank you all for taking the time to join us today.
Thanks, Grayson. See everybody later.